Sweet. Welcome to this week's Office Hours. I'm going to start with nobody here apart from Chris because I can only be here for half an hour. But I am recording this, as you watching the recording will now know. Um, if you want to ask questions, including you, DMM, you can ask them in voice and you can also ask them in the Creator Space channel. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the new template functionality that's been added to the editor. And templates have been something that have been part of Dot Big Bang for a long, long time. And they're part of most kind of game engines that offer some sort of composable way of creating uh, game entities or game objects in your game. Um, and so, you know, we have this guy over here who's the social builder 03 entity. And he's made up of this DBB chatty script, a DBB lookout script. And if you go into the secret F3 menu, you can see he's actually got a transform component, a collision component, a skeletal object renderer, and a text renderer as well. And it's kind of interesting because like, an entity is just this collection of components and as well as its name, its tag and its own unique ID. And all the behavior comes from those components put together. So different collections of components define how a game entity will behave. And so it's quite handy to be able to pre-create like game entities. Like I want to have my player game entity. I want to have all of these templates we have here. So the template tab is, has been populated with templates for a little while now. We had released the template toys, which give a bunch of things that you can, can kind of do with templates that interact with our default player really nicely. And so these are all just using our template system. They're just templates that have been flagged to say, hey, you can use these. Um, and eventually we'll have your templates in here and you'll just be able to drag them into the game as you can with these. But right now that's not functionality we have. Right now the functionality that's exposed uh, is basically purely to let you spawn entities in at runtime. And that's is quite useful. Um, so like if you look down here you can you can see um, that I'm not actually the owner of the default player template, although I probably am actually, uh, but this is maybe protected in some other way. Uh, and so kind of like the point of the player template here is that our players all have a set of default behavior, which template toys use in terms of inventory, interaction, respawning, health and death, cosmetics, you name it, we've made like a little little thing to help out with that sort of thing. And so our, our template system is like key to how a game creates the player at all. As, as part of the game being created, we create templates. So they're an integral thing to understand. And the player is spawned into the game as you can spawn things right now. So we kind of need to do two things. We need to be able to create a template and we need to be able to spawn a template. And so kind of like the interesting thing in that regard uh, for right now is like, this is a way of spawning a template, dragging something into the game, but you can't do that for your template. So one of the, one of the things that templates do make really handy is kind of level design. Like I've set up a tree in a way I really want, like I just want to come and scatter a few around and tweak them maybe a little bit. Uh, you can't do that yet, but you will be able to do that soon. Um, so the, the kind of like interesting thing here is that this is linked to the trampoline template. So this entity is its own thing. And in the game, when the game is running, I can change the, the value of this and it won't change the template. So if I drag out a new one, see this is impulse 300, drag out a new one. And this is still impulse 800 and this is still impulse 300. And so you can bring instances of a template into a game 
and change them how you like, spread them around, and uh, and then use that to, to create things. And you can do this at runtime as well, so the game is running. I'm not streaming, damn it. I will stream now. Sorry, everybody. I got started my video recording and I was too excited. Here you go. You can now see what I'm talking about. And you'll be able to catch the start of that in the, the video as well. So what I'm just showing is uh, this is the, the template that's not changed. This is the template that is changed. Um, and what I can do is I can do three things right now. I can unlink the entity from the template so it's no longer has this connection. It's just a entity in the game. I can update the entity from the template, which replaces the values in the entity with the values from the template. And if I do that now, you can see this just pings back to 800. And I can update the template from the entity. And I don't want to do that to the trampoline because it's part of the template toys and that would change it for everybody else. Um, but what I do want is to maybe create another template and maybe kind of like get around this restriction about level design. Um, so let's see if we can figure out a way to do that. And on the way, we'll learn how to spawn stuff in. So let's get rid of this and let's get rid of this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find uh, a voxel object and I'm gonna use a faithful cube. It's, a, it's kind of handy if you're gonna spawn things in uh, to represent that spawn location some way. And so, Typically, when we're doing things, these cubes are all very complicated looking. Um, is there a simple cube? Is there like a blue cube? I'm sure, no. Why is there not a single, I'm pretty, I'm 100% sure I made, made one. Here we go, a red cube, let's use that. So it's quite handy to have a cube that represents the position something is going to be spawned in at. Um, and you can hide this when the game is running. I've got a script, uh, which is like hide, hide, come on. Somewhere. Yeah, well, maybe it's, I think it's using some cheats to dive into the engine to hide stuff. But the, the net thing is you can hide stuff if you want to. We won't do that just now, just because I can't find the script to add. Um, do we want to create a new script? And we'll call it office hours spawning. And all of that's good. And so what we, the first thing is we want a template to spawn. And that needs to be a template ref. And this then gives you a way of spawning templates into the game. And what we're going to do is use our API just to spawn this in. Uh, game dot add entity from template. We've got the template, so we can do this dot template get exclamation mark because we're going to say basically if we don't have a template set that's a bad thing um so this is going to cause an error in a second because we don't have a template set uh, you can set whether you want it to be in fact it's going to cause an error now no you can set whether you want it to be networked or not so um will the creation of this entity be networked across everybody that's connected. So for this example, we'll say false. Do we want to network the transform? So do we want to send through updates about the entity's position and rotation and scale? Now uh, we're gonna say no. And what position do we want? We want to put it at the position of our little cube. So world transform dot position. And that's actually all we need to spawn an entity in. Like that is as straightforward as it gets and everything else is making making that more complicated, essentially. Um, so we have this spawning thing on there. We can click on this 
and we can see a whole bunch of things that I've already created here, uh, which is pretty good, including all the template toys, which is also pretty good and stuff like the bunny from Escape the Aliens or a firework. Um, I don't know which one of these would be fun to spawn. Um, maybe we'll do... Uh, do we have, I think that's pennies. So right now you can only see your own templates, which, you know, makes this a bit trickier, but we'll make a, another template in a second uh, and just show you how that would work. So for now, we'll just do uh, the melon hat that's being worn. So if we stop the game and we start the game, there's now a melon hat here and we can select the melon hat and see it. Um, well, you can see it's just got a uh, link object to slot, which is attaching it to your head if it had a parent set. And now we've spawned this template in, we can control click it and drag it around all we want to create copies of it. And that's essentially how you can get around this kind of like level design template thing um, by making a little spawner that just spawns your thing in for you and then you can copy paste it around the place. And this then means that you don't need to laboriously set up the entity every single time you want to create a new one in a new game, you can just spawn the entity in and, and copy it around. So let's do something a bit more interesting than that. Let's make a new template. And I'm going to make it from a template that Penny made, which is this wearable cosmetic here. If we drag it into the world, you can see it uses the generic co uh, cosmetic script. It's a hat. It's going to spawn a template itself, this cosmetic worn thing. Uh, but we don't need to change that. And it's going to link it to our head and we can take it away or not when we pick it up. Um, and so that's perfect. It's uh, It's been set up for us. And we're not the owner of the wearable cosmetic script, so we can't save over that template. But what we can do is we can unlink the template. And once we've unlinked the template, it's just an entity in the game. So we can just create a new template from us from it and it'll be ours. So let's create a new one. Uh, and let's call it like wearable hat. I don't know what kind of hat. Wearable thingy. Um, and then we can save it. Perfect. Now we have our own wearable thingy, which is there. And then we can get rid of this. And we can click on this and we can change it from being our melon hat to being our wearable thingy. So when we stop start the game, our wearable thingy is now sat where our cube is, which is perfect. Uh, and this one that's been spawned into the game is still connected to the entity. So we can edit, sorry, still connected to the template. So we can edit it and it will edit the template. Um, and so that's really useful for like this sort of thing. So we've got this crown on there right now. What other kinds of hat do we have is the question. One that's not going to be answered until our thingy. So hatchets, there's a lot of hatchets. That's interesting. I'm going to take this uh, little bell icon thing just because it's funny. A top hat. Foxy the host made a top hat. Perfect. Let's give ourselves a top hat from Foxy. Ah, it's a boat from some scary thing, probably. And so we changed the um, the object renderer. So that's updated it. We can call it Foxy's awesome hat in here. And then uh, we can update the template from the entity. So we'll overwrite it. Uh, we'll change the name to Foxy's Awesome Hat. And we'll save. Now we can delete this and go back here. And we'll see this is updated to Foxy's Awesome Hat. And when we stop the game and play the game again, it spawned in that hat and I can run over it and I get the hat stuck to my head, which is perfect. So we've taken this wearable cosmetic template toy 
we've changed the voxel object on it and we've saved it we unlinked it and saved it as a new template and now we have this wearable hat that we can place anywhere we like in any of our games that we like and it works within the system of uh of template toys that we've created so for example if you wanted to do something with like player health you could grab the health pack see how it works by looking at the code and then cut then unlink it from the template create your own template from it in this f3 menu here and just update it to do whatever it is you wanted to do and so these template toys as well as being a great way of getting in and like making gameplay without needing anything complex are also a good way of just exploring how to make games yourself or giving you a starting point into making things now that templates are available. So the other kind of thing you can do um, with templates is obviously spawn them continuously. So like you have a missile launcher that you want to spawn missiles out of, you do it with a template. So let's repurpose our red cube to do something more exciting. And uh, let's get rid of you. And there are some fireworks on here that I saw. So let's just see what one of those does. Firework white. I don't know what this will actually do when it spawns in. Might explode straight away. I don't know if that exploded because uh, it is in the ground or if it exploded. Yeah, so that might just be a VFX. Um, so what we can do just to keep things simple is just continuously spawn that. So we did this in start and if we have a delay and our delay is three seconds, then we can say the next spawn time is going to start off at zero. Then we can do, we need a tick. And then we can have spawn the thing as a function, which does this. Uh, and then basically what we want to do is this dot next spawn time is the current time plus the delay. And then if oh this dot next spawn time is greater than zero and it is set hey angelcast how's it going we're just playing about with templates hello um what was i doing next spawn time is uh, less than the time it is now in the frame that we've hit in the future then it's time to spawn stuff again um, so we want to do this dot spawn the thing, and then we'll need to set the timer to run again, exactly as it is in start. And what this is going to do is every three seconds, it's going to spawn whatever template we've got start set here. So in our case, we can play the game, we can shut down the editor, and we'll get an explosion every three seconds. And you can see this is using a particle system and it's probably just scaling things up to make that kind of cool exploding effect. I don't remember quite how that works. But it's like very straightforward. Now we have something that's keeping our game alive. So templates are really useful for this. So if you were to say, uh, we'd use it a lot for spawning uh, VFX and sound effects. So if I go back into the editing thing, and bring up the entity browser. You can see here the fireworks like arriving and disappearing as the entities are spawned into the game. And you can select these and we can oh, we can pause the game, we can select it and we can see how this uh, entity is set up. So good old Bobby D's play SFX script, which basically just starts the sound effect that's on here. 
Uh, it's got spatialized audio, so depending on where the camera is, you hear things differently. And it's randomly offsetting um, position, but not rotation, because rotation isn't checked here. And that's just kind of giving a little bit of fuzziness to everything uh, when the particle system is created. And so we just have this set up. You can see the particle system here. Um, it's just going from a big size to a small size, going from a high opacity to a low opacity, mostly going to be white, going to last around four seconds, and have just these initial configurations. So it's got a whole bunch of speed, gravity is enabled, and there's some drag on all the particles, which is what causes that like nice explosion and decay. And if you look up here, we can also see that it's emitting from a sphere. We can tell that it's round and it's being distributed on the surface of the sphere. So it's not like randomly in the middle of it. It's all on the surface to start off with, which again gives you that kind of cool firework effect. And so without having templates, you would need to kind of like have one of these sat somewhere in your level and maybe copy it and copy all the components from it and try and make your own entity every single time you wanted to do it. But obviously with a template, it now becomes uh, setting up the template in the first place and then doing one line of code to spawn them. And the other cool thing we can do for this, and this is maybe dangerous because I'm changing things live. Um, so we can see this template is just going and going and going and going. And we could go in and change our start color to be a green. If it would let me choose it. Why won't you let me pick? I think there's too much going on. Why have I broken it? I do appear to have broken things. I haven't broken that thing though. Ah, okay, I know why. So what's happened is I've picking the color for something that has disappeared. So that's a, a bug that I'll need to report in a second. Um, so we're gonna have to reload. Can we save this game, do we think? Yeah, Merit 71's template office hours. Cool. Is it going to work? Yeah, okay, cool. So we'll go back in there again and we'll do this again, but we'll pause to do the edit. What I want to show is that you can live edit these things and it will update the template. But obviously, if the thing that you're live editing disappears, then um, you break the color picker right now, which isn't ideal for this demonstration. So back in F3 into the particle system, let's get a red. And you can see the update of the colors there. Now let's go to like a nice cyan -y kind of thing. And going all the way down here, we want to update the template from the entity. So now we're going to be doing red and blue. We can pause again. We can grab it. Um, we could change what explosion it's going to do. So maybe it's going to do boing instead and we can update template from entity and we can play again and that makes a different noise when it goes off and at this point we've updated the template for this game but we haven't saved over the template itself and th those changes won't take effect for other people loading the game until after it's been saved so that's quite handy you can make changes and see what they will do like you can imagine you have loads of these going off so now we could like you know what we can do in fact is just copy whoops select this and try and move it we can make another one and now we have two and they're both spawning the same uh, particles so we can select one we can well, pause the game select one of them and this time when we change it, uh, let's go green. 
Uh, this time when we change it, it'll only change like one of the things that's currently running. And we've covered in particles. And so we haven't updated yet. We've changed the colors on that previous one, but we haven't actually updated anything. Well, this might cause some problems. Ooh, or I'll uh, just get mad lag. So I think because this entity got destroyed, it's not actually updated. So we go back in, change these. So you can see there's still some interesting, funny bits that can happen here. Now we can update the template. Come on, click the button. Now when we play, <laughs> catches up with us and it's green and purple again, and both of them change at the same time because they're linked. Um, so that's kind of like handy. They're both spawning the same template, I should say. So the template instance has been updated and now it means that whatever we get out is that kind of combination. And we can just go on and on from that. Um, so really that's kind of like the best, really short introduction to this, uh, just to show what you could do with it right now. In the future, you'll be able to use things much more like uh, the template toys, dragging them into your game, which is very, very useful for building games. But now I have to run off and rescue kids and my wife from a storm. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I run away? Feel free to ask in the text chat as well if you don't want to chat. What's the thing you like the most about templates? Um, the power and expressiveness, Chris. No, I mean, like, I'm going to stop this because it's really distracting my eyes. Um, it's just purely like they're a significant part of really any game engine. Like Unity has prefabs. Um, Unreal has templates. Any game engine you, you will come across has some sort of like data uh, data-driven way of defining an entity that you can recreate. And it's that just ability to create things that have already been defined is just a key thing to this sort of style of making games. So there's not really something I particularly love about them, uh, other than that they are an incredibly useful, like primitive for making games in the game engine. That's what I love about them, making games. And on that note, I am going to uh, run away and save children from a storm. It's not that bad, but it is pretty gross outside because it's been snowy here for weeks and weeks. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye, Charles. -bye. Bye,